Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Excel Video 259. I'm Nate Moore. Spent some time today helping another group pull appointment data out of their practice management system so we can, we can look at no-shows and the reason and cancellations and the reason and try to better manage our appointments. When you're ready to pull your appointment data out of your PM system, I'd love to help you. What we're going to do today is play a little more with that whole fill down trend thing that we've been talking about the last couple of Excel videos. We're going to play with a linear trend, a growth trend, and then this step function today. So I've got a 2 and a 4 in each of these. Let me show you how you might play with this. If I do a right click and drag like we've done the last couple of times, and I choose linear trend down here at the very bottom, the linear trend says I'm going to take 2 and add 2 to get 4, add 2 to get 6, add 2 to get 8, and I just keep adding 2. Whereas what a growth trend will do, if I drag this down a little ways, what growth trend will do is instead of adding 2, it's going to multiply by 2. So I got 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16 times 2 is 32, and on down I go. So that's the difference between a linear trend that adds and a growth trend that multiplies. You may need both, and there's an easy way to get both, which is right click and select. Now what I want to do is do a right click and let's go down a little ways. Yeah, it's too far. It goes off the screen. Let's, let's go down this far so you can see. The very, very bottom is series. And what I want to talk about from the series window is this step value and a stop value. So if my step value is 6 per se, that means that rather than add 2 or whatever, I'm going to add 6 as I go. And then I'm going to do a stop value of, oh, let's say 30 and click OK. Now notice what happened. The first thing Excel does, it took the first value, the 2, and added 6 to it. So we got 8, and then plus 6 is 14, plus 6 is 20, and on we go. But notice how I made the stop value 30. And what the reason you do that is you say, well, Nate, well I mean, I just go till I'm done, and that may work for a lot of times. But wh what if I'm going down for you know 50 rows or 100 rows, and what I don't want to do is scroll all the way down and count how far I want to go down scrolling and then fill that entire range with the right amount of numbers and oops, what if I went to one too many or one too few or something like that. What the stop value does is it says, hey, you know, just pick as many cells as you want and I'll stop when I need to and I'm not going to put anything in these extra cells. You don't have to worry about any of this extra stuff. The stop value would just stop adding six when you tell it to. So I got three different functions here from this, from this series menu. I can do a linear trend that's going to add, a growth trend that's going to multiply, and then step value will just add this amount every time until I hit a stop value. Three more tricks to, again, what are we trying to do? Fill data quickly so we can get on to the analysis. If we know we, we need every, um, every two for whatever reason, every 15 minutes for um, surgery times or appointment times or anesthesia blocks or whatever it is we're counting, we can just set that trend and run with it and then do all kinds of things with the analysis instead of spending all our time just entering the data to start with. That's what I wanted to show you on the series side of the menu. We've talked, obviously everything we've done in columns also works in rows. And we've talked about dates and linear and growth and date and autofill and trends and all that. There's one more trick in this drop down menu. It's the justify option. I want to show you what fill justify means. We'll do that next time. Thanks for watching.